Seasons hellos to everyone from the Doyo. It's our second year here at the Doyo, so it's time for our second annual sumo year in review. Seasons all throw. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Doyo here on Mr. JWAG's channel. It has been another thrilling year of sumo and it is time for our 2021 year in review. Now I hope you all enjoyed the sort of transition period between Alpha Dogs because it appears to be over. Uh, sort of the, the, the number one theme that this channel has been getting at since our inception, now two years ago, has been the idea of who is going to take over when Hakuho finally retires. Well, it finally happened. Hakuho retired. And it's pretty obvious. It's, it's Terra Nafuji. Terra Nafuji completely blew away all expectations I had for him this year. I thought he was going to pick up one U show, maybe two. I had no concept that he was going to, first of all, just like blow his way through Ozeki like it was just like a road sign. It's like, no, I'm good. I'll just keep going from here. Four U show, two June U show. I just don't know how many sumo years end up being like two at Sekiwake, two at Ozeki, and then two at Yokozuna. That might be the first time I've ever seen that happen. So I think the new sort of overarching question in sumo that the channel is going to explore for at least the next year or so is, who can beat Terra Nafuji? Uh, we had a, a number of retirements this year, of course, the big one, the big dog, Hakuho, the boss. Like, greatest of all time. Like, we're going to have a whole separate Hakuho reaction episode where we're going to work through all of our feelings about Hakuho. It's, it's going to be great. We also lost Kakuryu. We had a whole episode about that. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful Yokozuna. Uh, never the best Yokozuna on the Banzuke, but of course, no one was when Hakuho was around. Channel favorite, Ikiyoi, uh, the, the, the possessor of the greatest voice in Maka Uchi Sumo. He had spent so many years up in the top division, end up falling down to Jurio. Made it down to Makushida and then decided to hang it up. He's already got his elder stock though, so good on him. We will miss you, Sekiwake Ikioi. His high rank was, of course, Sekiwake. He finished with one Jun Yusho, five Kinboshi, two of them against Hakuho. Also, former Sekiwake Kotoyuki. Uh, he was only Sekiwake for, I believe, like one or two tournaments, but he still counts. Kotoyuki. Uh, he ended up having one special prize in his career and one Kinboshi against Haruma Fuji. So, Kotoyuki, happy trails. As we mentioned before, Shonan Zakura, the former Hattori Zakura, uh, the owner of the longest losing streak in professional sumo, retired this year. Uh, we talked about him a little bit, but again, just the, the sheer stick to it it takes to have a career like that. Hattori Zakura, respect. And surprisingly, the most painful retirement for me this year has been Jason Harris of Jason's All Sumo Channel. He has announced his retirement. He says he's going to be giving us one more Basho of coverage in January, so I encourage you all, if you've never listened to a Jason Basho, please go do it now. I know he's going to be leaving up the whole website as an archive, but uh, without a Jason's channel, there wouldn't be a, a, a Mr. JWAG's channel with a Dohyo. I know a lot of other people were equally inspired by him. So Jason, thank you so much for your contribution to YouTube and for all just the sheer amount of extra work you have put in to the, the world because of your love of sumo. Thank you. And unfortunately, we also have a death this year in sumo. Hibikiryu, of course, had that horrible neck injury in the ring and, of course, passed away not long after from spinal trauma. This has led to much discussion, and we hope better protocols for hurt Rikishi in the future so nothing like this ever happens again. We, of course, from the dojo, send condolences to him, his family, all of his loved ones, and his stable. So right now it looks like Terra Nafuji is healthy, which is something we did not expect, considering of all the rap. Now, Terra Nafuji, of course, does not appear to be a Rikishi who looks healthy, but if you put his attendance record up against people like Takakesho, Takayaso, he's been doing great. So from here on forward on the channel, we are not going to be considering Terra Nafuji any more of a higher injury risk than any other wrestler, because they're all injury risks. This is also the year of Terra Nafuji becoming a learning computer. Now, back in March, uh, I had this theory that every single wrestler had a had a road to three losses. We've discussed this before. But of all the people I mentioned that Terra Nafuji regularly used to lose to, he now, since March, has winning streaks against all of the wrestlers I mentioned. Okay, so Terra Nafuji was already an incredibly intimidating physical specimen, but now you're telling me he's learned to sort of adapt his sumo to various different wrestlers while he's already at the top of the Banzuke? 
We will be talking a lot of Terra Nefuji in the predictions for 2022. Another big positive change from last year is attendance of the top rankers. Now, this is a little different because we did lose an Ozeki and Asanoyama, so there were fewer people involved. But for Yokozuna and Ozeki attendance, we seem to be trending upward a bit because now Kakuryu and Hakuho no longer involved, so the, the, their their Kyujo ratios are going to be are not going to be dragging down the average as much. As we said, Terra Nefuji made it all six Basho without going Kyujo. Shodai all six without going Kyujo. Takakesho, he made it four, and then one where he showed up and he was clearly hurt, so like three healthy Takakesho, which is good, which means of the people heading into next year at the very, very top of the ranks, we can expect two of them per tournament to be healthy? <laughs> Yes, it is time for accountability for my predictions. My first prediction was that this year there would be no Maigashira 17 winning the championship. I was correct. Of course, two years ago we had two Maigashiras 17, Togashoryu and Terunofuji, take home the Yusho. This year I said it would not happen. It did not. I said both Yokozuna were going to go Intai this year, and that happened. I'm certainly not happy about it, but both of those guys were definitely getting up there in age. Uh, the bodies were definitely getting very, very creaky, and I don't think they had a whole lot else to prove. So I'm glad they both have their citizenship and their elder stock, and we will see a lot more of them in sumo going forward. Prediction 3, I said we were going to lose in Ozeki. We did. It just did not happen in the way I thought. I didn't think it was going to be Asanoyama breaking COVID protocol. What? Ah! All right, so... True, not happy about it. Now my fourth prediction, I got like half right. I said we were gonna get two new Ozeki. We didn't, we just got one. And then we immediately lost him to Yokozuna promotion. But I did say that one of the people who would be our new Ozekis this year would have been in Ozeki before, and Terra Nefuji did for that. So I get like a little credit on that one. Another partial credit, I said for my 2020 top five Rikishi, they were gonna win five of the Yusho this year, and we were gonna have one surprise win. And that was correct. We had the one surprise win, which was Daisho at the beginning of the year, and then I thought my top five were gonna win the rest of the Yusho. Now my top five for last year was Asanoyama, Hakuho, Terunofuji, Takakesho, and Shodai. And guess what? They ended up winning collectively five of the Yusho, but it was just, it was four of them were Terunofuji. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little more democratic in there. But no, four were Terra Fuji, one was Hakuho. So, so that group did win five, but not what I thought. I thought these four gentlemen were going to make their Sanyaku's debuts or, or, uh, or a triumphant return to the Sanyaku. Meisei and Wakataka Kage nailed both of those. They both got up there. They're both looking very strong to at least stay in the joy for the upcoming year. However, my other two predictions were Kota Shoho. Oh, oh, that... That one's gonna haunt me. And Onosho, who's been managing to stay up in the upper Magashira Joy region. If he had gotten a Kachi Koshi this tournament, he might have been able to like pop up into the Sanyaku, but not was not to be. He's not going to be in the Sanyaku this year, or even the next Bonsake. Okay. So that was on me. Uh, in a happy prediction to get wrong, I thought we were going to lose a lot more wrestlers this year to Intai than we did. Uh, I assumed we were gonna lose the Yokozuna, which we did, and Ikioi, which I thought we were going to, but none of the other guys I thought were going to retire did. We still have Tochi Notion, Kaisei, Sadano Umi, Shohozan, Enho, all of these guys who I thought might not be in sumo by this point, still are, so very happy to be wrong about that one. Now would be the time where I would do my year-end rankings for, like, where are people heading into the next year of Sumo? But it's going to be so anticlimactic because there's no point. It's, it's Terra Nefuji, and it's Terra Nefuji, and it by a large, large margin. So instead of a numbered ranking system this year, I have broken down the top half of the Maka Uchi division into sort of tiers of talent of people where I think they have similar, like, floors and ceilings to their Sumo. They are now grouped into tiers, of course, starting at the top with Terra Nefuji. Now before we get to the tier, is we're going to talk about some honorable, some dishonorable mentions. Dishonorable mentions. Like I said, Asanoyama. Dude, what were you thinking? You were... Ah, uh, dude. All right. I expect someone like Abi to be dumb and to go out and to break COVID protocol. That's Abi. That's what Abi does. But Asanoyama, I did not expect. Uh, you had a great career going, dude, and now you've still got like two or three more Basho to just sort of hang out and think about what you did. Hope you come back real strong now in 2023? Taka Genji, or as he now has been called online many, many times, Taka Ganja, of course, ended up getting expelled from sumo for weed use. 
Now, I mean, I personally do not agree with Japanese cannabis laws, but it is not my call. Uh, Takagenji, you knew the rules going in, dude. What you thinking? And two sort of other dishonorable mentions. It's just, uh, and again, it's not like a dishonor in the Japanese sense, but sort of a dishonor in like the disappointed sense. Uh, to two wrestlers, Tochi Notion and Kageyaki, both of whom were Make Koshi for the entire year. Yes, that is correct. The entire calendar year of 2021, Kageyaki and Tochi Notion got zero winning records. We do, of course, have some honorable mentions as well. Daisho ended up being our surprise winner this year. That January tournament just seems to be a, a plethora of first-time winners. So we have honorable mentions for three more guys. Guys who, they're not technically rookies, but they're guys who have had really, really solid years and sort of increased my esteem for them greatly over the past year. Wakataka Kage. May say and hoshore you. Now here we have three guys who are on the youngish side. I think they have a whole lot of skill, talent, and energy. A lot of that sumo heart. Uh, I love watching Hoshoryu. He's managed to like incorporate so much of like the Mongolian throws and uh, the agility that we uh, uh, we generally sort of associate with Mongolian wrestling. Uh, his last match with Kidibayama, fantastic. Hope he brings a lot more of that in the new year. Wakataka Kage, another slightly undersized rikishi like Hoshoryu, but has somehow been able to stay up in the Joy Jin. Got up to the Sanyaku, got beat down a little bit, but he's still getting Kachikoshi up in the Joy. That gives me hope he'll be in the Sanyaku a little more in the upcoming year. And May say, this is a guy I'd been sort of watching out of like the corner of my eye for a few years, but watching him over the years develop from more of a pusher thruster into now much more of a belt wrestler. He's gotten stronger, he's gotten smarter, he's fought his way back up from injury, and now he's at the point where I think he's got like a mental book on most of the people he's going to be wrestling for the next year. So we'll see if Meisei can take that momentum and lead that into maybe double digits on the Sanyaku next year? Oh, you've all been very patient the whole episode. But here is my year-end Tears of Sumo. We're out here breaking hearts and chasing all my fears. Welcome to the charts of my tears. All right, tier number one and probably tier number two both should belong to Terra no Fuji. He's the alpha dog. He's the boss. He's the mountain. He's the kaiju. Whatever sort of metaphor you want to throw out there, he is it. And as long as his body holds up, he is staying there. The next year down is two guys who have won championships before, and you think... In a tournament maybe where Terra no Fuji was not feeling his best, these guys could reach in and grab another one. This is, of course, Takekesho and Matake Yumi. They are currently tied on the active list for the number of Yusho with two. Now, of course, there's a caveat for Takekesho. It has to be what we call healthy Takekesho, because not healthy Takekesho usually doesn't finish the tournament or just gets to that eighth win and then loses the rest of the tournament. Now, Matake Yumi seems to be on the other side. He's not going to go Kyujo very often, but he's going to get you that, like, seven to nine wins almost every time. Recently, though, in the past November Basho, Matake Yumi seems to be giving us a little bit more. So we'll see what happens in the following year. This would be, I think, his fourth consecutive year with the Nozeki run. That didn't quite pan out. The next tier down I call Sanyaku Regular. These are people who spend a lot of time in the Sanyaku, and they don't always spend time. Some of them bounce down and bounce back up. But you're always a little surprised when one of these people isn't at least in the joy. That starts with our friend Ozeki Shodai, then Daesho, Takanosho, Meisei, and Ichi Nojo. Now, I know Ichi Nojo just got like a 5 and 10. He's looking a little iffy, but sometimes people in this rank, like Daisho got a 5 and 10. Uh, sometimes you get the 5 and 10, but you manage to stay in the group. I'm still hopeful that Ichi Nojo will be a Sanyaku regular. Next step down, I would call the Joy regulars. Now, sometimes these guys will pop up to the Sanyaku, but when they do, they usually get hammered down pretty quick, or they get like an 8 and maybe they can say it, but they do not stay in the Sanyaku for any length of time. But, conversely, when you see them below the joy, you know they're probably going to have a pretty good tournament and bounce back up there into that top sort of 12 guys. These are guys like Hokuto Fuji, Wakataka Kage, Kiribayama. Now these two are a little speculative, but I would say Abi and Ura. Speculative, of course, because Abi is coming back from all of this suspension. I think this is eventually where he's going to be. He's definitely going to be a joy regular. Let us not forget, Abi had four straight tournaments at Komasubi a couple years ago. 
And Ura, as I've said before, we don't know his true talent level because he's always gotten injured right about when he gets to this point in the Banzake. But he just got a Gino Show and double digit wins, so he's going to be in the Joy next tournament. I'm hoping he'll be able to stay in there for at least a year. I'd love that. Now, the last group I'd sort of call like the, the middle Joy or the, the lower Joy regulars, these are guys who you see bounce up to the Joy, and then they usually spend one or two tournaments there, and then they get smacked down to the mid Maegashira ranks. Uh, you'd be very surprised to see one of these guys up in the Sanyaku, but you wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see this person in the last match of the day. It's like sometimes you get to those matches in the, like, the middle of the tournament where you see like a Maegashira get bumped up to face a Yokozuna. I think you could see all these guys as worthy the Yokozuna fodder for the middle of the tournament. These are Onosho, Takayasu, Endo, Hoshoryu, Okinoumi, Takarafuji, and Tamawashi. These are the guys who I see yo-yoing between the Joy and the mid Maegashira ranks, but I wouldn't say any of these guys are in danger of being demoted down to Juryo in the next year. So that takes us down to 20. I think there are like five or six more guys who maybe don't have to worry about Jurio demotion this year, but they're the sorts of guys who I'd be a little surprised to see them facing a Yokozuna in the last match of the day. All right, so the story of Sumo seems to be in a pretty stable place for at least the next year or so, and I am very excited to watch it with you. Now, of course, we have the year-long predictions coming up for 2022. We are going to have the predictions just for the January Basho coming up. We have more Shadow of Hakuho coming up. We have some extra interesting side episodes I've been researching, but I'm not going to tell you about because then you ask me when they're going to be done. I've learned that lesson with the Tama no Umi episode. Now, I know this is a little bit out of order, but before we leave, I'd like to give a sumo shout-out. And this sumo shout-out goes out to you, the people who watch this show. Uh, without you, there would be no show. The only reason I do this, and this takes uh, more time than I think it would appear, uh, as I do it for you, because you people keep coming back to watch this specific brand of idiocy. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank, thank you so much for commenting, subscribing, doing all that cool stuff. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about the plans for the channel in the upcoming year, so stay tuned for that. Everyone, have a wonderful holiday. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the new year on the Dome.